I was asked to talk about the presence of God in my life. And I hear a lot of people say that they see a big sign that God was in their life. And I haven't really had a sign that was noticeable to me. But I was put in a situation to where I know God put me in that situation. Um, there was this man, long story short, my mom works in medical care. And this old, older man and her, his wife came in and they were, they felt connected with my mom. And they became close friends. And then his wife passed away. And he was put in a situation where he wasn't very well being taken care of. And so we took him under our wing and we put him into an elderly home near our home so we could visit him whenever we wanted to. And I feel like God put me in that situation because him and I were best friends. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I feel like I will never have a real... My relationship with him was so strong that I don't feel like I'll ever have a relationship like that with anyone else. And I have my parents, my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, and my brother, but this relationship felt so strong with me that I felt that he changed my life and that I changed his. And yeah, I'm only 14 and I haven't seen a big sign yet and I still have a lot of life to live. And I hope that I get a big sign like that. And I haven't seen something like that, but I feel that I feel in my heart that I was put in that situation by God to make him happy for the rest of the life that he lives. And thank you. There's a lady, a child of God. She was born deaf. And now she's older and uglier. But she's still deaf. And all throughout her life, she would tell everybody, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to cause me to hear. And people would listen to her and they'd smile and they'd patronize her and say, sure, sure he will. And you know how people are, they'll go away and then they'll talk about that person and put them down and say she's not entirely with it. But this lady, a very intelligent lady, this child of God would not give up and not give in. And she believed her heart, mind, and soul, the Holy Spirit would cause her to hear again. And so in her older years, she goes to the beach and she gets knocked down by a huge wave. And her hearing was not restored 100%, but she could hear things. And she couldn't believe it. It was a miracle. She believed the Holy Spirit has caused her to be able to hear. The Holy Spirit gives us life in all kinds of ways. Without the Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be able to hear at all. We wouldn't be able to see. We wouldn't be able to speak. We wouldn't be able to share. The Holy Spirit brought Leah and Zachary up here before you because they had no intentions <laughs> and no desire. <laughs> it was not their idea. The Holy Spirit brought them up here 
to share God's word. And they did a great job. And the Holy Spirit is moving you and me and bringing us here. The Holy Spirit wants us to be connected and gathered and together to demonstrate the glory of God, to celebrate the life that God is continuing to give to us. There is a whole lot of hurt and pain and we know of the fires and we know of the tornadoes and we know of the crime. But the goodness of God is continuing to be recreated and renewed because the presence of the Holy Spirit is breathing this life into us. And that's why I had to ask you to come and breathe the Holy Spirit and a message of life to us. Philip wasn't so sure in our gospel text. Jesus, show us the Father and we'll be satisfied. We, brothers and sisters, are oftentimes not satisfied because our hearing has yet to be restored or, or this hasn't happened yet or that hasn't happened yet. And, and Jesus is speaking to us as he does Philip. And he says, don't you believe? I am present with you. Believe in me. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe in the Father. Believe in the Holy Spirit. They are with us, present. Without them, none of us would be here. It's because of the ability and the movement of the Holy Spirit that any of us are here right now. This is a glorious thing. Glory to God and to God alone. When we're grieving, many times we're the most vulnerable and open to experiencing God's presence. And we may see things that we wouldn't normally see or hear things that we wouldn't normally hear or believe that God is present in a way that we wouldn't normally believe. And these experiences can be weird. And we might not want to talk about them. But God is present, moving us and moving his creation in ways that are mysterious for God's glory and God's glory alone. So there's no superstition, but there is mystery as God is mysterious. We don't always see, and we don't always hear, and we don't always understand. And yet we can still hold on and believe that God will make me see, that God will make me hear, that God will make me trust in his presence. Throughout Acts, Acts chapter 2 was our first reading. Also in chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, chapter 19, the Holy Spirit is poured out in each of those chapters. And yet the Holy Spirit is not poured out in the same way in any of those chapters. And so sometimes we require, it's our problem, we, we demand and we put up requirements that if the Holy Spirit is upon you, if you're a child of God, then you have to be X, Y, Z. The experience has to measure up with this, that, and the other. Why? 
Don't, don't we believe in the presence of Christ and the Holy Spirit to come to us in a different way, in a, a unique way, a way that glorifies God? And it may not measure up to X, Y, and Z, because what we do in turn is worship the experiences instead of worshiping God. If I'm requiring you to measure up to this experience, which is acceptable, and you demonstrate it in an acceptable way, then I can accept you and believe that God is with you. Why? How about we worship God and trust that there will be different ways in which we articulate and share, see, hear, and believe that Christ Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are giving us life. And it's this very glory of life which gives us the capability of being present. Sometimes we need to stop what we're doing. If it's not working, have the courage to say, you know what, let's sing a hymn that makes sense to us. That is the Holy Spirit upon us. coming to us in unique ways. Well, we never did that before. Exactly. Holy Spirit, take us, show us, reveal to us that you're present so that we can simply share your glory in whatever capacity that you give to us. Amen.